Cash flow versus capital growth. That is what we're going to be breaking down in today's video. I know it's the age old debate, what is better? Should we be investing for good capital growth or should we be investing for good cash flow? Or even a combination of both those. And if you've read any of Robert Kawasaki's books, he talks about this a lot in a lot of his different books around the key differences between the two and also the importance of having good cash flow. He even has an online game that you can jump on and it's sort of like a board game essentially but you play against other players um, online. It's not bad, I've played it a little bit um, and goes over the basics of finding good cash flow businesses or property or even stocks as well. So that's what we're going to be breaking down in today's video. We are going to be using A2 Milk as an example and a couple of classic old farmers to try and really break this down into basic terms so everyone can understand by the end of this video what is the difference between good cash flow and good capital growth. All right, with that said, let's crack into today's video. Let's kick it off with Walt the dairy farmer. He's a classic old farmer, hard working bloke, doesn't mind getting stuck into a hard day's work on the farm. Do you see old Walt here? He only has a small hobby farm. So in total, he only has 10 milking cows on his farm. And each one of these old daisies produces 20 litres of milk per day. So that's 10 cows in total, and that's 10 times 20 litres of milk today, giving him 200 litres of milk per day. So in total, we have 200 litres of milk per day. So 200 litres of milk times 30 days of the year where they milk the cows. This is a total of 60,000 litres of milk per year. This is the good A2 milk that we're chasing here, none of that A1 rubbish. And because the supermarket respects old Walt because he's a hard working man and spends his days on the farm, they're going to pay him $1 for every litre of milk that they give him. So that's 60,000 litres of milk. So that's giving old Walt $60,000 in cash flow per annum. So let's look at the second farmer, Cooch. Now he's a dry stock farmer. He's good friends with Walt, but he's a pretty sharp fella, old Cooch. He doesn't like getting up at three o'clock in the morning every day to milk the cows. So he has what is known as dry stock. This is just purely for the beef value. And he buys these as a calf at $500 per calf. And in total, he has 20 calves totaling $10,000 in cost. And he holds these dry stock for the period of two years. So you see old Cooch, he's been moving these beefies around the last two years. But there comes a time when these old beefies need to be moved on to the top paddock in the sky. And when that time comes, each one of these beefies is worth $2,000. So that's one beast worth $2,000, and that's 20 beasts in total, giving Cooch a return of $40,000. So let's say you want to work this out on, on a return on investment. So we take our $40,000 and we take away the $10,000 for the cost of the initial investment. Then we divide it by the initial investment of $10,000, and now we times that by 100. This will give us our percentage. If we work this out, this is a 300% return on investment over the two year period. But now we want to work this out on a per annum basis. So we take our 300% and we divide that by two. This gives us 150% return on our investment per annum. So there we have it, the tale of two farmers. Cooch, the capital growth farmer. He would have to keep repeating this process every two years, buying new calves and selling them off after two years off to the big paddock in the sky. Whereas Walt, the cash flow farmer, on the other hand, he just keeps getting up 300 days of the year milking his cows, giving him that good, steady, reliable cash flow. And that is the tale of the two farmers. Hopefully those little cartoon animations made it pretty clear on the difference between capital growth and cash flow. Let me know in the comments below if you did enjoy that and I'll incorporate that into future videos moving forward. Now guys, we're gonna jump over and have a look over some of the financial statements of A2 to try and put this into actual practice on a real company, that being A2 Milk. All right, let's jump on over to the laptop and check out some of the latest financial statements for A2 Milk. Okay, so now we're gonna tie this back to a real life example and we're gonna use the A2 Milk company as that example. And we're gonna be looking at how much free cash flow is getting generated by the A2 Milk Company. But in order to do that, we need to just establish what exactly the free cash flow is. In very basic terms, the free cash flow of a company is all the fr free cash that is left over after you've deducted all the operating expenses and all the capital expenditures. Now, if we were to tie this back to Walt, the cash flow farmer, let's say all his operating expenses would be things such as insurance, or if he's drawing a wage from the business, also rent or equipment, that would all come under the operating expenses. So this would have to be deducted. And then also if we were to subtract the capital expenditure as well. So let's say that, oh, while well, he wants to build a new 
milking shed and he wants to have robots that milk the cows moving forward, then obviously this would be a capital expenditure. But that might be more of a one-off. You know, he's not doing that every year. So you've got to factor that in as well. So you subtract both the operating expenses and the capital expenditure, and then you're left with the free cash flow. So now that we've established what the free cash flow is, let's have a look at how much free cash flow the A2 milk company has had over the previous years. So if you look back to 2018, and this, we're on the cash flow statement here, we can scroll down to the bottom. They had over 226 million in free cash flow for 2018. And if we move forward to 2019, they had 285 million. 2020, they had 420 million. And then in 2021, they had 82 million. And now we know why this has happened because the cash flow has been substantially affected by the whole pandemic. The distribution network has been heavily disrupted due to they can't get the product back out to China and a number of different things that are affecting the company at the moment, which has heavily reduced their free cash flow. And we don't know if this is going to start returning once the pandemic, once we get to the other side of this pandemic, that is yet to be known. But if we look historically, they have had very good free cash flow. Now we're going to move on and have a look over at the return on invested capital. The second ratio we're going to be looking at today is the return on invested capital. This is a very important ratio you want to look at before you make any investment. And this is one of the first things that Phil Town looks at before he takes on any investment. And he likes to see this in double figures. So basically, the return on invested capital is a calculation used to assess a company's efficiency at allocating the capital under its control back into profitable investments. It's a great indication of how well management are at allocating the capital at its disposable back into the business to generate more profits to us as shareholders. So let's move on over and have a look at what the return on invested capital is for A2 Milk. So we can see here on a 10-year average, the return on invested capital for the A2 Milk Company is 22.4%. It has been a little bit lumpy over the last sort of 10 years here, we can see. The last five years has been incredible. They have had some phenomenal return on invested capital. We can see here in 2016, it was 31%, 2017, 48, 18, 49, 19, 42, 2020, 39, and we can see here in 2021, it's dropped off substantially as well. We don't know if A2 Milk will get back to its former growth rates. That is yet to be known, or if the cash flows will get back to what they were prior to the pandemic either. But you can see it, historically, they have had fantastic return on invested capital and very good free cash flow as well. But like I said, it's still yet to be known whether or not they will get back to those sort of former glory days for A2 Milk. But the age old debate, cash flow versus capital growth. Hopefully it's a little bit clearer there now, guys. If you've got any questions on anything I covered off on there today, drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to sort of help you out. For me personally, I think it's great if you can get a good combination of both within any investment. I know when I first started investing in property a number of years ago, I was always sort of more focusing on the cash flow as I wanted all the rent that came in from that property to cover all the expenses that included the mortgage, the rates, the insurance, any slight repairs, the management costs were all covered by that rent that I received. And I was sort of focusing more on that than the capital growth. Um, and I still do that today as well. But generally, that was something that I really focused on. I wanted a good positive cash flow um, property rather than maybe a high growth where I'm having to top it up week after week. But that's just my take on it. There's many different strategies when it comes to investing in property. But that's just sort of the way I go with it. Um, and also, I've tried to sort of bring this over to investing in the equity markets now as well. So I'm looking for good businesses that are trading below their intrinsic value, that have a good chance for growth, um, and also have good free cash flow coming in month after month, year after year, just keeps going. But that's what we're all looking for. Like I said, hopefully you got some value out of today's video. If you did, please do us a favor, hit that like button, helps me out a ton. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button, that way you can stay up to date when the next video drops. All right guys, stay safe out there, and until next time, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers guys.